Welcome to another episode of True Confessions. I am Michael, your host for uh, this ministry of God's eternal truth. Now, every day, uh, well, almost every day, because God gives me a break once in a while, allows me to get some rest and do some of the things and live my life. You know, God isn't just totally controlling of us in everything that we do, but God is with us. And all that we do when we truly believe and want God's help in our lives. Now, this is information from God's uh, eternal truth ministry. God is with you always and will help you in your life as long as you truly believe that there is a God and that His Holy Spirit is with you. It will be. God will be with you. All right. Uh, the topic of this uh, episode is... And the title the topic is uh, what really happened. You know, I I uh, I woke up this morning and I'm waiting. I'm having my first cup of coffee because uh, you know I'm thinking about my research and how how it's going. And I gotta and I gotta say, my research in the treatment of type two diabetes, mine specifically, uh, has been extremely successful that my glucose has gone from high levels um, that were practically uncontrollable. I was rarely ever getting to a normal glucose level. It was a struggle. I mean, I'm, with all the medications I was taking and the dietary approaches, and, and, and you can't live normal. You know, you can't live a happy life if, if, if you got to eat bland, tasteless food all the time. And this treatment, it makes it easier, but more importantly, it doesn't require that you follow any strict dietary requirements. You know, I continue to exercise and apply, you know, common sense dietary approaches and uh, take my medications uh, like I should and uh, in addition to the treatment that I'm um, um, investigating, um, my glucose uh, every day is in the 100s uh, when I get up in the morning now. It used to be like 150s or 190s at the, at the same time. I've been doing this treatment for about uh, three months. Uh, I'm going to say it started in late April, April, May. June, it's May, June. So really, two months. So this treatment has been going on for two months now. I wasn't using this treatment prior to that point in time. Prior to April of 2024, I didn't use this treatment for my di diabetes, and I was struggling, you know. And then the Lord told me, "This is what you need to try." You know, I came across it, and the um, Lord said, "Yes, you need to try this to see if it will help you." You know. It will help you. And God was telling me this is going to help you. Really? I wasn't so sure. And I, <clears throat> but I discovered that it did. You know, I wasn't so sure because, and I wasn't willing to, uh, to do it. But then when I began handling this material and started feeling the effects from just holding it and smelling it. And then seeing my glucose levels go down, because I, you know, I check it, I, I'm, I'm a regular, you know, I'm a diabetic, so I check my glucose all the time, you know, especially depending upon what I feel and after I eat and before I eat, and, you know, because if your glucose is high, you don't want to eat more. You want to eat more, but you don't want to eat more. What I'm saying is that type 2 diabetes makes you want to eat all the time. Even if your glucose is high and you don't need to eat. If your glucose is 150, you don't need to eat anymore. So I was checking my glucose before eating and it was still too high to really reasonably eat, but I would eat anyway. And it would just go like 180, 190, but you got to eat. So uh, sooner or later you got to eat, you know I mean? Uh, what's going on with your blood and the glucose? That, you know, that's bad. If it's happening to you, but I'm telling you, right here, right now, in true confessions, 
a message of God's eternal truth that tetrahydrocannabinol will lower your glucose levels if you are a type 2 diabetic. If you are a type 2 diabetic, you are not producing enough insulin to manage your glucose. Tetrahydrocannabinol influences the production of insulin. Essentially, it alters the chemistry in your brain so that your brain, whatever was going on, it was telling your pancreas not to produce insulin and, you know, telling your pancreas and liver not to work with each other. Suddenly that chemical is not there and it's being replaced with another, another chemical that's saying, do your job to your pancreas and liver. That's what's happening. Using tetrahydrocannabinol alters the chemistry of my brain such that now my brain signals are telling my liver and pancreas to do their jobs. Produce enough insulin, manage the glucose. Do it. And they're like, we're doing it. Because you said so. <laughs> it's a funny way of saying it, explaining it, but that's what's happening for me. I wake up with a I wake up this morning at midnight. I can't sleep. I had a nice dinner last night. I couldn't eat at all. Yeah, that's one of the other benefits of, of using uh, this medication is that it's also appetite suppressant. I don't feel like eating as much or as often. But when I am hungry, I want to eat. But then I, I don't overeat. I eat until I just, I've had enough. But that's not everything I put on my plate now. So I, I can look at what's for dinner. And, oh, yeah, I want that. I want that. And I want that. You know, because um, that's just what people do, I suppose. But um, So I got this plate all loaded up with food, and I don't even eat all of it because I get full about halfway through. As a type 2 diabetic, that's very unusual. But that's one of the effects of this medication. That's what it does. Suppresses appetite, low, increases your insulin production so that your glucose is more managed. And this greater management of blood glucose uh, ties in with your appetite. You know, when your glucose is not so high and you eat to raise your glucose, then you eat until that happens and then you stop. With type 2 diabetes, your glucose is already high and you want to eat and you can't stop. You have to, if you feel like you need to eat more because you don't feel like you're satisfied, you don't feel like you got what you need from eating that food. It's kind of a, it does a mind trick. So there is something chemical going on in your mind. There's some kind of brain thing going on. It's not just your endocrine system. And I think that's a problem with our modern science is that our modern science and, and medical professionals are trying to treat uh, the endocrine system as the cause of the illness. When the real cause of type 2 diabetes is brain signal chemistry in your brain that causes these signals to tell your organs what to do when that's out of balance when that's wrong then it doesn't do what it's supposed to do it doesn't send the signals to your pancreas and liver to tell them to do what to do their jobs so tetrahydrocannabinol changes that chemistry in your brain and suddenly as a result of that your pancreas and liver are being told what to do like they should be told and after two months of regular one gram a day dosage
I'm running normal glucose and I need to back off of using tetrahydrocannabinol because now my concern is that if I continue this same dosage, I could actually go low. You don't want to go low glycemic. You don't want to go low glucose. You know, ketoacidosis is not a fun thing. Now, I've been ketoacidosis before, several times, while taking another medication that was causing it. Uh, there are some medications that will drop your glucose levels very fast and very effectively when they get too high. But they can also work so effectively that they take you low to ketoacidosis. This one medication will do that. Um, you get stomach pain, you have hot and cold sweats, uh, you shake, you, you know, they're, uh, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you are in a nerve, it's like you're nervous and sweating and you feel sick. That's ketoacidosis. So when I woke up this morning, I, I had some feelings of, uh, what were like ketoacidosis, but ketoacidosis that were like ketoacidosis, but not the same. So I got up and checked my glucose. I was one hundred. Now, what was really going on with me is my stomach was, you know, I just growling, and uh, I felt like I wanted to get up and eat something or drink something, do something because. Um, I had already had problems with diarrhea in the middle of the night, and I think that's because I ate cheese. Now, I've become very lactose intolerant over the last year, uh, so it's not related to uh, the tetrahydrocannabinol uh, or anything associated with that. But um, I added cheese to some gravy, and I took some medications, some um, lactic acid medication. Excuse me. Some of what happens is I end up burping a bit more. I have a little bit of stomach gas because there's nothing in my stomach right now. And I need to get something to eat pretty soon. So, you know, this this episode is probably only going to be 30 minutes long because I need to go eat something. All right. So, you know, we're now coming up on 2 a.m. So it'll be after 2 a.m. when I eat. I didn't want to eat at midnight. I can't. It's not right. But I will have a cup of coffee to, you know, drink it slow over time. And I began to feel better. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to explain how you feel when you get up and after having diarrhea twice and and um, being dehydrated. And I actually lost two pounds um, from the time that uh, I weighed before dinner and the time that I weighed when I got up after you know, midnight, I had lost two pounds. How can you eat dinner? And then eight hours later, get up and have lost two pounds. I don't know. But that's what happened. So, you know, I'm going to stick with my uh, research. And that's not really the topic of this episode. But I do want to update people who are following both my research programs and uh, this ministry of God's eternal truth uh, because I'm not I'm not trying to lie or fool anybody you know uh, I'm not advertising some pro-drug culture or uh, I'm not promoting some uh, pro-drug culture but I will tell you truthfully that um, marijuana was created by God to treat some illnesses but it has been misused for quite some time and even criminalized in a sense that people, you know, realize what it did to them chemically in their brain and without understanding what it was and what it was doing overall. They just thought it was party time. Well, it's not party time for me. 
It does things, you know, makes me more creative and imaginative, and I sing songs, I write music, I write books, uh, I, you know, I commune with God, you know, I'm more, you know, open to receiving that information from, you know, a higher power, and that's what happens. There was no quiet place on the earth when Jesus died. There was no quiet place on the earth when Christ died. There was no quiet place. There was no quiet place when Jesus died. There was no quiet place when Christ died. There was no quiet place on God's green earth when the Messiah died. There was no quiet place on God's green earth when the Messiah died. There was no quiet place. There was no quiet place when Jesus died. There was no quiet place when pagans killed him. There will be no quiet place in the universe when I die. There will be no quiet place in the universe when we all die. Because pagans keep killing the Christ. Because pagans keep killing the Christ.